All right, so this is Letter Quest. This was a free game that was on PS and well PS Plus, and basically your goal is to make it through these houses more or less, and spell out words kind of in the style of Scrabble to defeat your enemies, which are typically ghosts of many different shapes and forms. This is a snake ghost. There is smaller people. Uh, larger people. There's a thing that looks like a boo. Um, and see, the, the uh, dots that are on the letters basically indicate how much power that specific one has. And, you know, the more dots you have, the more power you hit them with. And uh, the little thing on the left there the, with the triangle button is so you can replace all your tiles. Uh, square is, of course, the attack. And, you know, it's pretty simple. It's not really timed unless you're in a timed mission so you don't have to worry about you know being rushed unless of course you're on a timed one and then then you are rushed but i've never had that much of a difficulty getting past it um the other things that show up sometimes you find a guy who has a store um you find little treasure chests that have items in it and then you'll find this uh this worm bookworm guy which you'll see what he does here in a second. Um, right there, you see the tiles change colors. It's because apparently he poisoned me. It's, it's a snake, you know. And if you don't get rid of him soon, it says it'll affect other tiles, which you see the R became red. There is a large ghost who will break tiles. And the only difference is they won't affect each other. However, they will not do any damage so you know you want to get rid of them as fast as you can there are random achievements for using so many of these tiles um, this game has its own set of achievements within itself that doesn't really affect other things um, you know not on the trophy level there are trophies for example use three words that don't contain a vowel you know like the word Y W H Y um, but this game has its own achievements kinda like the game Jetpack Joyride, which has achievements in the style of it gets you points from within the game. It's not so much, you know, you unlock a list of things that you do, more or less, you just level up using those features. Now, this is a very good game. Um, it was available for November. I think it's still available for a few more days if you want to check it out. It is free if you have PS Plus. Um, besides this, there are a few other things I wanted to talk about. One of the things is the fact that this is a digital-only game, as far as I know of. I have not seen this game in a physical form anywhere before, and I really doubt that there is one. Um, but, you know, it's kind of sad because there are times where there are games I wanted to play that have disappeared. For example, you got things like Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, which was on Xbox Live and PSN, I believe, up until... I think about a year or so ago, uh, it was taken down, and there is no PC version for me just to go download. Uh, there's no way to get this game unless you find a console that already has it, but then at the same time, you're going to run into account issues, um, which is a weird thing if you think about the future of game consoles. You know, there's a lot of digital games and like updates and things that aren't going to exist except on the consoles that it's already on. There is an example of this when Flappy Bird was taken down off of the, uh, the iTunes store. The iPhones with the game on it were being sold for $1,000. Now that game was not worth $1,000 in any way, but it's just the principle of, you know, it's going to change the future of collecting games. And really... You know, you can't go to a store and buy half the games anymore that exist for a console because they are digital only. And in the future, when there's no servers to run these digital games, they're either not going to work or they're not going to exist. Which kind of hurts the indie community in the long run. Um, the only place that really does this right, again, I guess you could say is Steam, because Steam allows you to actually make a disk backup if you wish of the games that you own and you know reinstall them off the disc so steam games will always exist it's more of like the xbox live we wear psn stuff like that it's going to disappear which raises another topic if you think about it 
if you're paying the same amount of money, let's say for a full AAA title, you're paying $60 for a game that has the chance of disappearing down the line. Um, you know, having the physical copy makes a lot more sense in the long run. I know there's a lot of convenience in having digital only, but that's really the only upside to it is the convenience factor. Uh, you know, sometime down the line, you won't be able to play the games anymore unless the companies, including the console companies, support future backwards compatibility or even the servers that host the games, which doesn't happen very often. I guess one way you could equalize the whole price to value ratio is if you could decrease the price of digital games, you know, make it more enticing. There was an example I saw last year where there was Call of Duty Ghosts still at full price on the Xbox marketplace. However, you can go to GameStop and buy it for eight, you know, eight dollars compared to sixty. Nobody is going to want to pay full price for a game that is practically being given away in a store. You know, I'd rather drive a few minutes up the road to go f pick up a physical copy, skip the convenience factor, and save myself fifty dollars. You know, this, that's a no-brainer situation like that. Um, so if they could bring the cost down, you know, I can still understand they need to make money, but it doesn't have to be sixty dollars for a digital copy. Take the price of what the box and the disc and everything else would have gone into. You know, forty dollars. You know, that, that that would make it a little more enticing. Um, besides that, th the big thing about going all digital anymore is, you know, companies are relying that you are going to actually do this. And, you know, they don't finish games. A lot of companies don't bother finishing their games anymore. And you have to rely on day one patches or updates over time to make the game playable sometimes. And... One of the big examples I saw recently, which isn't a game that I really care about, and I don't think anybody else does, uh, was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. And I only say that because of how bad it, <laughs> it came out. It was, And I'm not buying that any time ever. But, you know, if I don't buy it now before they stop supporting the, the patch, the disc doesn't have a playable game. So... If I were to buy this, let's say 10 years from now when I could find it for, you know, a penny because it's unwanted, it's not going to even work. So you either have to do it now and update every game. You have to buy every single game now, update them all. Or in the future, you're probably not going to be able to play at least half of even the physical release games. So hopefully people realize this at some point. And eventually, you know, this whole digital only thing, you know, it can balance out. I understand that the future is digital, but at least make the games playable with the disc that you buy. And there's probably not going to be discs in the future. I'm pretty sure the Switch had a cartridge slot and I think everything in the future should go cartridge again makes more sense you can adjust them accordingly as the game's needs so hopefully everybody will figure something out soon because it's not looking good all right if you enjoyed give it a like leave a comment do whatever you need to do there and you have a wonderful rest of your day I'll see you next time